Welcome to the Talking Stick Show. So we are on a very special show. We are joined by Craig and Pavel. Hello, brothers. Morning, Dale. Mm-hmm. Hello, hello. And we are into the winter solstice. We had a fire ceremony just over a week ago now, and this is really the first, well, the, the second time I'm actually speaking to Pavel. So it's uh, we had a great fire, just connecting with the friendship, connecting during this winter solstice portal. So I'll just firstly introduce everyone. We'll start with you, Craig, if you can just tell those new listeners a bit about yourself. Okay, um, so yeah, my name's Craig and um, I run the sound therapy company. So for the last four or five years, I've been um, working as a sound practitioner using gongs, Himalayan singing bowls, and that type of thing um, just really helping people to relax tune into themselves a bit more um, prior to that I was working as a life coach so there's some elements of, of life coaching brought in as well um, so a, a big thing I do is just help people to relax and let go um, and that, that's probably say 80% of what I do and with sound we can use it in a more therapeutic way um, to help people overcome blockages and, and that type of thing or if they've got long-term health conditions they might come for regular top-ups um, so yeah that's a bit about what I do I'm based yeah. just just south of York near Selby beautiful thank you Craig and you Pavel what about you brother let's tell the listeners and it's great <laughs> to have you on the show this is the first time you're coming on the show so I'm very honored to be able to have you on brother no, oh, thanks, Dale. I'm really honored to be here. It's, it's really nice. Um, yeah, the last week's ceremony was really beautiful, where you led. And um, yeah, I live in New York as well. Um, I'm a therapist and uh, I teach Kundalini Yoga. So I'm helping people to um, find path to themselves. So um, it's through various different practices. So um, they... Uh, I, I, I try to show them the tools so they shift the consciousness from here to here. So the, the transition from the mind to the heart. Um, yeah, just, just to show them it's, it's, it's possible to, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not that far away on the path there as well. So I'm still learning. But I'm really enjoying uh, working with people and, uh, and um, showing them these magical tools, what, what they can do with the with the body and uh, and I I work also as a as a practitioner so I do uh, Chinese medical massages in New York. Beautiful. Yeah, thanks Dale. Thank you. Beautiful. <clears throat> and let's talk a little bit about the ceremony we had. So um, it was great. We all met up, had a fire, and we shared this space where we could co-create together. It's something I talk about in my healing practices many times. Is how important ceremony is for the self expansion, consciousness exploration. So let's talk a little bit about the ceremony and how it affected you when we all came together. So we'll start with you, Craig. How was the ceremony for you? Yeah, fabulous. I think what came out of it was for me was when you were talking about um, not always being the facilitator. So I held space a lot for other people, but I never really taken that much time to hold space for myself in that way. So I've, I've been to festivals and other gatherings but more as a one-off thing um, and for me on that night it was just really nice to be in that space I, be- I felt very held um, felt that I could be really open and honest with everybody that was there there was a lovely energy um, and just yeah just with- without being the facilitator just being there as part of a, a gathering of friendship um, so yeah that, that's really what came out of the ceremony for me and it was good to just like I said that, that creation um, the, the, the intuitive drumming sessions that we did um, yeah it was just a really beautiful evening I just really enjoyed it beautiful and it's great like you were saying just then the getting out of the practitioner role and teacher role at times so you can actually go into being a student, being there and actually experiencing the moment without having to have any programs saying that 
I have to teach, I have to be doing this or saying that. It was, it's a great way to be able to be a human and that's something I've had my issues, personal issues with, was moving past that and being able to be human again, being able to go to a space and going, I don't have to hold the space, I don't have to do anything and I'm still a student at all times. And there was parts of me which was so ingrained into doing what's this message, That what's this message, what's that message. And it kind of got me off the path of actually being able to experience being in my heart, listening to people and enjoying the world again. And there was a huge side of me which was going through a death process from all throughout the last year, being able to stop myself, putting myself anywhere, but in the middle with everyone on an equal balance, non-competition, non-hierarchical order as a means of going forward on our spiritual path. And that's one of the greatest things for me is to be able to be in non-competition, non-hierarchical order with everyone I share the space with. Because as soon as you go into competition, you go into your ego and your shadowy side. And it's great to have this ceremony to be able to uh, come together in this balance and come together and like Pavel, Craig, you share what's going on with you. If there's anything you want to say in the ceremony to be able to listen to you and witness it and know that everyone coming to this space is on the equal balance. So, Pavel, what was your experience and your sum up of the ceremony we had together? Um, Dale, I really enjoyed this space. Uh, it was really nice. Uh, it was a f my first time being in Strinsel. And uh, the journey just itself, the journey to get there in between this, this beautiful uh, circle of trees. I really enjoyed the, the space. And uh, it was quite... Uh, interesting how the trains were passing by next to us as well as we were doing this this really beautiful deep work and uh, you know having the ceremony and and the circle and drumming and we were going down and <laughs> you could see the trains going woo, woo. and we were like oh yeah this is actually the world as well <laughs> so it was it was very really beautiful and i and i totally link to what you guys said uh, about um uh, stepping from the teacher to the student and uh, being held as well because um, this is uh, because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in a teacher position quite often and it's it's really important I think for for especially for teachers to to just sit down and, and relax and be held <laughs> because yeah we really really need that yeah so I really enjoy the ceremony and um yeah, I'm a musician too, so I like to, you know, bring music and bring loads of sounds and, yeah, all sorts of things. And, yeah, I'm, on Saturday I'm doing another one here with guys. <laughs> well, and so what is that you, you're doing? Because I'm going to be coming to one of those events next year. Um, so just tell everyone what you do and the, about the men's groups. Oh, but my men's groups, okay. Um, so um, I've just started my own. Uh, I've used to do it with a friend, Jyot Prakash, at the Rising Dawn Sanctuary before. We kind of cooperated and, and created this uh, Sun Warrior Camp, which was uh, once in three months. And uh, just uh, this winter, I decided because he went traveling to, uh, to Portugal uh, to, to do it as well, you know, because I think it's it's big need for, uh, for, for men to talk and for men to to share what they know. So um, the, the link, I always link into a chain so the chain gets stronger. So if everybody brings up something, what uh, you know the men know and so we can learn from each other. So sometimes it's not much about the topic, but it's actually about being there and being in the energy of the space and, uh, and uh, just, just listening to others sometimes. Yeah, and then you can bring some kind of a topic and yoga to it and sound journey and yeah, that's just extra. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk a little bit about being held then. Let's kind of dissect that term a little bit and what it really truly means. So Craig, when we talk about being held, what, what in your perspective kind of makes you really think, what are kind of some of the blockages which stop us from being held? Is there any childhood connected to that so on and so forth? Yeah, um, for me, it's feeling that you're in a, a safe place that you're able to voice whatever's true for you without judgment and, and that's sort of the, the biggest thing for me about about being held I know from you know talking about childhood that I've always been quite a sensitive guy and being able to express that 
um, felt difficult sometimes as a male um, and so for me that a space of non-judgment is, is sort of crucial to feeling held and um, being in that sacred space um, and 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 just yeah just talking about the energy there just coming together sharing the space being totally open and honest and, and with, without that judgment and that that's what we were talking a little bit about on the phone yesterday was the triggers which stop us from being able to go into that space and sometimes we can find ourselves hanging around with a lot of women and not so much only a few men and when you hang around with males if you're a man it completely changes everything because you've got that brotherhood there of a lot of the father stuff can potentially come up with, with your relationships with other males so what for you say looking at your inner child as well what does speaking to uh, to male frequencies as a male help you kind of process in a way um yeah well i think um as i said it was is that sometimes being uncomfortable when you're in sort of male circles if um, your view of the world doesn't match with the topics of conversation or how things are being expressed and so um yeah i've, I've always felt comfortable in groups of women probably more than than in groups of men i mean it's a bit of a generalization but um just from the energy and the way things are expressed um so yeah i'm not sure where i'm going with that now <laughs> but yeah just um so in, interacting with with males sometimes felt that i couldn't be my true self felt maybe slightly intimidated about tr expressing who I was because of that fear of for me the word that always comes up is ridicule okay so it, it's that thing of and I know there's a lot um, and the older I've got I've realized that a lot of it is is like a mask or a face that, that sometimes we wear to be so we're accepted as part of a group but it felt like I was in that position quite a lot that I was sort of almost pretending to be something else so that I was accepted as part of the group. And that's but as I've got older, I can see that sometimes that is, it happens, it wasn't just me, there's lots of other people who felt the same. So I think just um, acknowledging that and, and putting that out there. And, and like I say, when you're with groups of other men and you're like, oh really, you feel that way as well. And it's somebody, <laughs> You are human. <laughs> like, oh wow, you're the same, and that's just yeah. for me that those breaking down those barriers and blockages, as, as you were talking about, that's an important part of coming together and just being open and honest with people. Beautiful. And there's that side, say, like you all have those group of friends from your childhood where you grew up, and you you're kind of like ego is always playing with you how to be a boy and how to be a man and like it's talking about women in certain ways and if a lady comes you'll be like oh look at her blah 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 there's so much conditioning which we have to go through to be able to go on to this healing path and understand we have to separate perversion we have to separate ego and we have to separate all of it to go back to this kind of neutral source of ourselves where we were the childlike but the imprint of the father and the mother like you were saying some people find it much easier to be able to speak to women because their relationship with their mother is much better than their relationship with their father I, i've been i've fallen into that category where i've been not, not being able to speak my truth to male and now doing these shows and being able to speak and actually saying my weaknesses are strengths and every single weakness i have is a strength and it's a lesson individuality to my journey for me to go through to learn about myself and I was kind of walking away always like thinking or oh, what words do I say trying to kind of like you say fit in in a way but now I'm learning the skills of being authentic and just being myself and if I feel like shit I feel like shit and I'll just say that and that's helped me grow and become so much more grounded before I was quite ungrounded the last three to four years ago and now I've done a lot of work on my father's side, a lot of forgiveness on my front and a lot of change from my own process because I have been through trauma, we've all been through trauma. So I've had to go back to those parts and let go of them and feel freedom again. So um, Pavel, what's your take on being held? What do you think when you hear that word being held? What does it bring up for you, my brother? 
It brings a brings a sigh, brings a relief. <laughs> as, you, as you said that word, I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, just being here, it feels like being held as well, which is which is beautiful. And um, yeah, for me, it's definitely about the um, the authenticity. What Craig was saying, um, you know, when you're in a circle, when um, it's sometimes really beautiful when you see people who are sh uh, really shy to talk. And um, if if I sense that this could be the thing, you know, I, I'm, as I open the circle, I say, you know, if, if you feel like um, you're shy and uh, you're nervous and you can't talk, you can just say that as well. That's authentic. You know, I I'm, I'm have this massive uh, dumpling in the throat and I can't <laughs> speak. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, sometimes it's um, what I really like working with is a silence. So um, when um, I don't really like to go around the circle who talks, I just like to put the talking stick in the middle and who uh, who wants then, then talks, which is brings a really interesting dynamics because then you're not forced. And um, what I also enjoy with the with the space being held is a when you when you talk, you really know that everybody is listening, and maybe you have not been given the the, the chance even in the past to to have this space, you know, to uh, have all the time you want really to to express what's there, and for men especially, for men it does take time to open up. Women they're just like, you know, they talk 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 talk. <laughs> but men is a um, men is a much. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to um, compare. But when I think the the gentlest of of the men's really gentle. So the the person who tries to understand the man really needs to listen deeply, and be really silent because the emotions there. But it's it's probably not as you know grandiose as as the female. So you really need to. Um, sink into the energy sink into the silence and this is what i think in, in the men's circles is and you're really given the space yeah and this is what being held for me yeah. beautiful and let's talk a little bit about masculinity and the divine masculine and actually the false masculine program which the system has created for us for males um, as you are growing up you are showing that you should be into say doing sports or following a football team or going out and drinking Let's separate a little bit and talk about the difference between the divine masculine and the false masculine. So, Craig, can you give us a little bit of your perspective on the separation between the false male and the true male warrior? Yeah, thanks, Dale. Um, yeah, I think, uh, like I say, I was always, I think, in touch with my sort of feminine side so even at school um, like in the in the arts woodwork and, and things like that the practical things I struggled with initially and um, you know I did home economics there was only me and one other guy in the whole school were doing home economics and I still love cooking to this day but um, yeah in terms of the, the masculine roles um, I mean I was I was very good at sports and that was one area that I felt that I did become part of the clan if you like because I was quite good at and, and running and football and, and those sort of things. Um, but yeah, the, the the difference between, I think for me, I, I talk about having strength and sensitivity. It's not one or the other, you can have both. Um, and just having that depth and resilience and strength and being there for, for other people. And I know we, we, we think about life partners and that type of thing, being a support to the, females in our lives I've got two daughters as well so there's always that idea that you you're a, a, you know a provider and a, a, a pillar of strength if you like for those people but that doesn't mean you can you, you, you cannot be sensitive and for me it's when that starts to go into a bit more of the the ego side and the sort of puffing ourselves up that you know when people talk about sort of toxic masculinity but you know we, we, you're going into stages um, of using and maybe using sort of ag aggression rather than assertiveness so you know there's a, there's a sort of a, a line there as well um, so so yeah I've lost my track a bit there on, on where I'm going with that but so, yeah um, so yeah it, it reminds me, me when... it's that it's not 
it's not being afraid to be sensitive and there is a power in that as well and, and that knowledge in that beautiful and that reminds me of when for me was speaking to my father because my father didn't really talk to me much because his father didn't talk to him so I always innately had that program of when I'm a male and I don't have to speak about my feelings and that got to the point where I hit rock bottom because of it I went through such a, a depression mode because I had so much built up I'd say tension in a way and I wasn't able to express myself when I was younger I felt so different I felt like my needs weren't met in a lot of ways but I was there to experience and experience that and I forgive my family I forgive my father I love them and I've moved past that and I've been able to understand that as my own sacred journey and me going through those trials and tribulations so Pavel what about for you brother separating the two of the fake uh, the world shows us that, that masculine or, and the real divine masculine yeah it's a good one isn't it um it's it's i think it's um you know the the fake masculine is um it's what was craig was saying you know how how we conditioned and how our ancestors were conditioned to be there's the strong that provides there's, there's no emotion and you just keep going and there's pain and you don't really acknowledge it or so so um i think uh, moving from the from the mask from the um, um from what it was you know from the conditioning to be the the authentic uh man it takes a lot of courage it's just not it's not it's not a small thing really to you know to step up or to to even come to the circle it takes a massive courage because uh, you go through blocks already and you're not even there <laughs> you, just, you didn't even arrive and you overcome a massive block of like i don't know some childhood trauma or connection to your father or so um for me um i believe that the placing yourself in, in you know in the place of vulnerability and um and um be able to be held either by men or women now we talk about men so um it takes a massive portion of courage so i i really bow down to all the men that are doing this because um it's it's a big thing really and then we can talk about you know the archetypes of of men and we probably might might get to that later if if, if you don't want yeah um yeah so um for me it's it's the um placing yourself in the in the in the vulnerable position because then you really go deep and then you start working with your own traumas and and uh, yeah and then it's then it's authentic but it does take a lot of courage that <laughs> uh, courage reminds me of the hermit zone so a lot of people listening i'm sure myself have been there before is being and becoming the hermit and this is a huge 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 topic in spirituality all throughout the industry there's so many people who are doing so much work but when it comes to coming out and actually meeting people they, they just don't do it and it's so important for those listening to be able to find the courage to start speaking to people again and getting yourself out there and not letting the brain ruin your experience not letting the um i'd say the expectation as soon as i understood expectation as a limitation that really helped me always go out into groups and just enjoy the group for what it is and as soon as you expect the group to be this or this person that person this you've lost the experience and you've given away your power to your expectation so one of the things for me when i learned as soon as i expected anything to be anxious or to be this and that i got limited straight away so for those listening to be able to understand that as soon as you have expectation in any of your journey you limit your experience because you can't reach an infinite state of so many different possibilities so say if i met with craig and pavel and we went out and i expected it to be horrible and crap and this and that i've already expected it and i'm going to the experience with these expectations ready to be met without actually enjoying the process and a lot of anxiety in people who are scared to go into groups because they don't feel they can hold themselves before all they'll be doing is i've been there before is expecting this expecting this to happen what happens if this happens that happens and you go there and you you've basically haunted yourself basically from your own brain and it stops you from actually going out there and experiencing the brotherhood the sisterhood 
and it does help help you like when we had those that group together and when I go out with my other friends it's so fun to be able to be around other people and you understand how much they raise you up as well and the relationships with them give you so much illumination a lot of people don't realize how important friendships are for you to be there for someone to just listen to them even if they've had a shit day so let's talk a little bit about things what can happen before we're about to go into groups and Pavel let's talk a little bit about what can happen for people to stop them from being able to experience people <laughs> it's funny that you said that because I was just about to add this and you already asked the question which is very beautiful um, what uh, what I observe and I'm, what I'm observing is um, uh, when you have some kind of a practice you would like to do on yourself, like this man circle or, you know, your personal practice, if you do in the morning and the mind uh, is beautifully creative in creating such a magnificent, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, just lost it. Uh, excuses thank you excuses that um it will it will put that many beautiful excuses today i have to make a christmas tree there's no other evening in, in the whole month i can do it but i have to do it now i have to clean the bath i have to do this i have to do that and it will it will bring you that many so um it's it's really fun to observe what this can create so because probably the mind knows that this will be some deep work and and it kind of stops you <laughs> from getting there. So uh, that's one of the things before you even get there um, to 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 sink into this and sink into here and see if this is actually what uh, is important or or if it's just an excuse. And then again, it's it's the courage of transforming that there. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful, and and that's one of the things I always practice is having the brain engaged with the heart so they are working in equal balance. Uh, one of the, the meditation practices that I do is where I, I bring the brain, I visualize the brain coming down to the heart, I visualize my hands going into my heart and my legs and I always, I always say in like a revocation format I now bring my heart to my brain and have them working in equal balance. So because sometimes we can have the brain where the brain is out of balance and we've got negative thoughts and the heart's not even in there anymore having any of your ideas or inspiration so a lot of people have the panic attacks or um, anxiety attacks because all of they are is they're ungrounded they're out of the body and they're in this brain all the time and they're thinking the brain is the true experiencer but the brain is meant to be worked with the heart and the brain working as one and the brain not to be working as much and that's why meditation is so important to have meditation part of your daily practice but not guided meditation only do that a few times and learn how to actually understand what true meditation is and that's about stilling this completely and going into your heart and being comfortable with the deep silence and that's something which changed my life was to be able to meditate in a way that my brain's completely switched off and I'm completely in the heart and I'm breathing using the breath technique and it's helped me with anxiety, it's helped me with <clears throat> before I go out or anything like that because I'm not using it as much and when I do use it, I try and use it with the heart. So that's just something from my own process which has really helped me go on to the next layer of my journey. So Craig, what's it like for you before, if you go into a big group, what are the things which come up for us which we need to really look at and understand? Yeah, I think just echoing what you've both just said really was that um, the big step forward for me was realizing that all the resistance was in my head. You know, I've been a massive overthinker most of my life. So coming into actually sound brought me into being able to meditate. That was that was the thing for me um, because my mind was always busy and it was difficult to, to bring it down. And sound just gives you something to focus on and, and it affects how our brainwaves starts to slow them down. Um, so that, that really helped. But yeah, my things were around the, the questions you ask yourself, as you were saying before you go somewhere, what's it going to be like? I don't know what I'm doing. What's, you know, and almost like expectation and just, yeah, a, bit, a big one for me was, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. What, what's going to happen? I don't know what I'm doing. What if I don't like it? You know, what, <laughs> what, if like it or, yeah. what if they're mean to me? <laughs> So, so that was a big one for me. And then the more, like I say, I, I 
I started um, going to, to men's groups and circles at festivals or at other gatherings where it was part of the programme that, oh, we're going to have a men's circle. Or, so over the last few years, I've been doing that a bit more, but never um, been in a like a programme or a, a regular practice with other men. So I'd say I'm very much working on things in isolation by myself. Um, and just more recently, within the last few months, really, um, started with a an online gathering, a, a vision quest that we're doing over the next three months and just find that regular contact with the same people has been really beneficial. And you start to build these bonds with people and that there's a power in journeying with other people with being in that collective. So even mm -hmm. though we're all on our individual paths and working on our own individual process, because you know there's 20 other men on their paths, it gives an added power to whatever you're doing and you feel, again, there's that thing about feeling held, being part of a bigger bigger energy. Um, and, and even I've had a quite a lot of resistance to working online this year, but um, it's, that's really taught me that you can see the energy of people over the internet and you can feel that energy and it's that consciousness um, that you carry with you from so yeah really uh, and it was my the more I did that I, I started to realize it wasn't in the experiencing the experience was always you know I was always blown away by the experience so I was thinking well what is it and then it came to yeah it's my head it's my thinking so a lot of my processes as, as you were saying Dale is trying to get out of my head and drop into my heart more and it was interesting, I did a song songwriting workshop um, a couple of evenings ago, and it was exactly the same thing. She said, let go of perfectionism. That's another thing for me, perfectionism. So let go of perfectionism, drop out of your head, drop into your heart, and just listen to what messages need to come through and what you want to express in this moment. And so that really is a theme for me at this time. It just keeps coming up and up, and it's like, yeah, that's what I need to do more of. And like I say, it's a process. I've been on the path for a while now, but you're still always learning and developing. Um, and, and that's it. And it, it reminded me of a sign I saw at the Wellbeing in York was, I love making mistakes. <laughs> Just a, di a different way of, of way of putting it. And let's talk a little bit about mistakes because that's so important. There's things what happen to us where we do make mistakes. We are human being. Um, and sometimes these mistakes can bring us into a state of, a lower frequency where we go into shame, blame and guilt. So let's talk a bit about starting view, Pavel, about mistakes and why is it important to know that it's okay to make mistakes? Well, it is because if, if you don't make mistakes, you're not going to grow. <laughs> it's just not possible. <laughs> so uh, we're back to the courage. Yeah? We're back to the courage to be um, allow yourself to make mistakes. And uh, what I really like um, with mistakes is uh, from uh, the uh, Toltec philosophy. They talk about uh, the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. If you don't know, it's, it's, it's brilliant. And one of the agreements is um, um, it's, it's a, a cure to, to the shame thing. Shame, you know, or um, in the past, but you could have done better, you know, if, if you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just not possible at, at the moment where you were doing that you did your personal best so it's, it's not possible to do better um and yet uh, you learned so from from your own mistake you know now it's you have better awareness so um yeah mistakes are mistakes are great and what is actually a mistake you know is is, is what is what is a mistake is that a thing <laughs> <laughs> it's just an experience. <laughs> it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just another experience. With, um, with, well, it's an opportunity, in fact, to to help you to grow. So, um, yeah, I, I love all these mistakes. Oh, I, I, I kind of, I kind of learning. I'm still in a process, obviously, because everything is a journey to to flip even the 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 strongest negative experience into your opportunity because it, in, at the end it is, you know, like, uh, I don't know, you get fired from work, uh, hey ho, and, and three months you have uh, your dream job, you know, that's uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's again, the mind, 
I don't know. A, a mistake is a is a is something. Uh, it's an interesting word, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> made a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. uh, we made. I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's it. It's about owning and having the mistakes and knowing when you do need to change some things on your whole process and having things and using being light-hearted as one of your means of going forward and not being too highly strung a lot of people uh, mm. ha are quite highly strung so they are very tense and it's like they can't laugh about the littlest things and they're just always in this serious spiritual mode where they're all right this and that but spirituality is all about fucking having fun it's all about laughing it's all about being a child and sometimes i myself have to have to put myself get the stick up up, up from my ass and actually start having a bit of fun and stop being so highly struggling like that that's another masculinity thing i feel from myself which comes up where i'm i am too serious at times and i'm then speaking and realizing i can actually have fun and i can lie <laughs> down without the programs of my dad telling me off or not not playing around here so on and so forth school and stuff like that and it's it's like the weight of the world is on a lot of people's shoulder and all it takes is one choice to be able to say no i'm not choosing to have the weight of the world on my shoulders anymore i'm choosing to be free yeah i just want to add what you said uh, when i started you know with the kundalini yoga and when i started with this kind of a journey <laughs> What's exactly what you said? It was like, I'm gonna be the yogi. I'm gonna you know, <laughs> get, up, get up every day 4:30, and then then I'm gonna do this for three and a half hours, and then <laughs> wait. I was I was so tense. I was yeah. so tense. And people are so like, why are you so fucking tense? Maybe have some fun with it. And I was like, oh yeah. I kind of I, I kind of stopped having fun with it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> And, th and that's it, even f for me, like when I do my sessions before, because I'm working for myself, there's that lovely freedom of working for myself, but still I'll have programs in me, which I have to tell to stop. I have to say no to them, not give them any energy because it's like when I'm doing a session, I, I, I forget about the fun of it. Like I'm so focused on getting this reading, looking at this person and, and doing all this that I've actually forgotten to breathe really deeply and just experience the moment. And when I do that, the feelings are so much more intense and I get so much more out of them. So I'm always blocking myself from trying to be this, going in there with the sage, getting the, the wand out, blah, 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 being all serious. And I'm like, no, I have to stop. I have to be gentle. I have to slow myself down, breathe and enjoy the moment for what it is. And that's really helped me as breath work is one of the most important things for my own personal journey of understanding how it is to just breathe in deeply, hold the breath and just be still and let go and enjoy the moment for what it is. So let's talk a little bit about breath work because I haven't actually talked about this on the Talking Stick show yet. So Craig, if you want to start on the importance of your perspective of using your breath to be able to control and balance yourself. Yeah, um, well, my first awareness of it uh, was probably about 15 years or so ago and I was in a difficult place in my life and I found myself quite often, I mean there's, there's a couple of things that come to mind here but I'd quite often sit in the dark, uh, we had a log burner at the time so just maybe with the log burner on so you've got that bit of light there so there's this thing about um, the safety of darkness but I, I, I was searching for things at the time. This was probably the start of my sort of journey of healing, the, the process. And um, I read about the benefits of belly breathing. And so I'd just do that. I'd just sit for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour in the darkness with a fire on and just deep breathing and realized how much it calmed my system down. So that's been a constant and, and changing the way I, 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 you know, I was breathing as well. So a lot more through the nose. Um, and yeah, just, just felt the benefits of that instantly. Um, so that, that was my first. And I don't have, I don't do like the Wim Hof technique or anything like that. I don't have a, a, a big breath work practice, but I just deep breathing has been a big thing, like I said, for the last 15 years or so, but just taking time to just sit. So meditation's part of that. 
just sit and just breathe deeply and just bring yourself into that nice centered grounded place beautiful and Pavel how what about you brother what's I know you do a lot of deep breathing techniques I can see so if you want to give your perspective on your breathing journey yeah breath work is just absolutely phenomenal and um, I think um, everybody should yeah there's the word should I don't like I could uh, incorporate this into into life because um, it's it, you can do so much with the breath. You can speed up, you can slow down, you can balance, you can get into the heart. Um, you can practice losing attachments with the breath. It's something very beautiful. Um, it's a massive helper for stress, anxiety, depression, abundance is also another one. Um, I'm personally practicing one minute breath where uh, it takes a few months to, to get to the, the full um, <laughs> spectrum of the breath. And um, essentially, you um, breathe in, hold for, for the same time as you breathe in. Let's, let's say you start with 10 seconds, you slowly inhale into the belly, bring it up, then hold with the open throat. So you circulate the prana even in the brain. And then it takes you the same amount of time to exhale. And um, gradually you can get to a breathing once per minute. And um, it's, it's a massive helper of, um, of, of stress because you're building the stress resilience. When somebody tells you something or something happens, you just kind of, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? And it, the, the reaction disappears. It's just not there anymore most of the times. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> can not come and somebody pushes your triggers but um the breath work is um yeah definitely it's uh, we, there's a segmented breath um you know there's there's so many breathing techniques so um yeah, it's been my uh, it's been my sadhana for for a long time and uh, highly uh, highly recommend uh, breath work to anyone really it's uh, yeah it's great beautiful and let's talk a little bit about the winter solstice i wanted to speak about this and we are coming to the winter solstice on the 21st i'd like to just hear everyone's perspective on their own process coming in to the solstice and what it truly means to them um pavel we'll start with you brother so about winter solstice yeah yes yeah, so j- just um, your journey and how how's your year been and going into it and what it means to you yeah, winter solstice is a beautiful moment. Uh, it's such a it's such a powerful day where um, um, the winter is at its, at its deepest. So you're looking at your biggest shadow, basically. You, you're going really inwards, and um, and uh, you, you see you see you're furthest from the sun you can possibly be. So it's a very um, deep moment, very powerful day where you can you know do a lot of stuff. Um, there's some planetary stuff happening, obviously some, you know, constellations and stuff. But for me, it's um, it's it's going as as deep as you can allow yourself to go that year again. And then also, it's a, it's a day of hope. It's a day of celebration because the sun is coming back. Hey ho, finally! And uh, the the days are getting uh, longer, and uh, it's it's you know the nature starts to slowly wake up from there, and it's it's a um, I really like winter solstice and I like celebrating it with a fire, maybe a sweat lodge or, you know, whatever can come up. So um, it's a magical day. Yeah, I like it. Beautiful. And Craig, how, how has this solstice been for you and what's your process on the winter? Yeah, um, the same really, just a time of reflection, of slowing down, of going inward. Um, and as Pavel said, it, it's that thing that happens in nature animals hibernate um all the plants well not all the plants but um, a lot of the plants lose the leaves and start to go inward everything seems to be con- contracting slightly um and historically i think um, the winter solstice was celebrated more than the the summer solstice um, and it was this like a time of reflection and and and, and time of looking forward to the the renewal and growth and um so yeah for for me as well it has always been a a time of personal reflection and um especially with 
with being self-employed the last 20 years, things always seem to slow down at this time of year from a business point of view. So it's always been a time when I can take time out to really think about, right, what, what do I want to do next year and plant some seeds uh, for that. Um, so yeah, just, and again, that, that the comforting of the dark. So I, I really like, I love autumn and the colors of autumn, but then going into winter, it's that those cozy nights in and so, like I said, log burners, I've had one for the last 15 years or so in most of the houses that I've been in. Uh, and that's become a, a, an important aspect of, you know, arriving home, cozying up, getting the fire on. Mm. You, you have more stodgy food. So we're sort of this, this thing of um, pizza, <laughs> looking after ourselves and yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> you, you uh, <laughs> pizza. <laughs> but yeah, you, you find that my diet definitely does change, you know, more salads in the summer and then you get to sort of september october and all of a sudden you want stews and soups and rice puddings and all these sorts of foods so you you, you know and generally put on you know half a stone over winter but yeah just that comfort and self-nurturing and care it's that sort of time as well beautiful so, uh, yeah, beautiful brother enjoy. And, and... Can I just say about the winter solstice, one more thing, Dale. Yeah. Um, what what came to me just now is um, as as Craig was saying, everything's slowing down, everything's dying, and all the trees losing the leaves and everything. Yet, human with this uh, new technology of light, when you have a, a street light, they still doing, they still going, 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 and it's really um, it's really common that people don't really slow down at all. So the winter solstice is is a beautiful reminder to to go in again like the nature you know and then you rise again in the summer and then you go in again so allowing yourself to really relax that's 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 winter winter so winter on its own is for me to slow down you know <laughs> allow yourself to do it <laughs> <laughs> and and it's funny how the autumn the color of all the leaves reminds me of sun sunset so that what, some of the some of the trees go to that color of sunset so it's like the sun setting on on like more of a a um, higher level so to say and for me the winter solstice so going back to summer the summer is where the most amount of light comes in so you can receive the most amount of light within your aura while you're doing the self work and the winter solstice for me is the time where i can go into more of the self work like the last week i've been doing trauma work where i've been going back to the past i've been speaking to my past self and i've been changing the past from my own words in the present moment and going back and sending a treatment backwards in time to the past self who was going through trauma so for me it's kind of like the closing stage where i look at things in my life or memories which are still affecting me and looking back if there's anything where i need to go in to do the self-work forgive and move forward the winter solstice does that for me and f on the actual winter solstice day to be able to share my light with myself and others as there's not much light coming in it's our time for that day on the winter solstice to be able to share the light with the brother and sisters from ourselves instead of receiving it from the sun so it's a very very beautiful potent time and we've had a lot of solar flares happening the last few weeks i've had headaches last week and i had a, had a match yesterday and i'd highly recommend if you if you are on the spiritual journey is to look at a solar flare uh, website and check up when the solar flares are coming because solar flares affect me more than the full moon and new new moon affects me at the moment they make such a difference when i realize when the solar flares are coming in so i can do more self-work i can have salt baths do a lot more meditation and self-nurturing so that's a, another good thing i've learned from this year is the importance of understanding solar flares and how they completely change our journey just as the new moon and the full moon does there's that process of the solar winds coming in and changing our reality as well so for me it's been a great year and i've met you two brothers um to be able to share the space with you and actually class you as my friends and be able to have fire ceremonies and have more of a personal fire ceremonies with you it's it's so good to be able to do that because that's something which has been unbalanced with me is finding more friends and <laughs> getting yourself out there even though i've got lots of kids and family i need to have the brother time i need to go out there and, and meet these beautiful people like yourself to kind of enrich in my journey so hermits out there get yourself out you can do it <laughs> so is there anything else anybody wants to say because we are coming to the end and craig is going to give us some sound 
uh, therapy demonstration. So has anybody got anything to share with them before we close with Craig? No. I think you were just saying about um, personal process there and, and you know that, that was a big thing for me and uh, in, in the other group that I'm part of there was this sense that we on the on the solstice we can release and mourn um, and, and, and really a time for letting go and then the renewal the regeneration that comes from that so yeah just that real pivotal point uh, mm. and, and for me this year it feels like quite a, a big big transition but in a in a really positive way beautiful, so, um, beautiful. so yeah i'm looking forward to that and i've got my own ideas around what i'm going to be doing and just just taking the day for myself um beautiful and um yeah that, but just going back to what you said about lessons was i've had some big lessons on um mis the mistakes thing something happened recently um and one thing about taking on so yes yesterday I, I i was releasing burdens and responsibility so taking on too much responsibility for events that may, may be outside your control or not your direct um doing but you feel responsible for them so there's there's been a bit of that as well but yeah so this this year is about so uh, and as you said journeying back as well and just releasing and looking forward to the future and moving forward in a in a positive way Welcome in Santa. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, Pavel, anything you want to share before uh, we close? Yeah. There's, there's, there's just one thing because, um, you know, for everybody, all these solar flares and, and um, the stress is, uh, is, is quite, you know, high, high up these days. And it's going to get worse as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be more adwords and more internet and more 4Gs, 5Gs, whatever is coming. So I would like to share um, my my experience of how to how to deal with it. Um, we've been talking about this before. It's it's your personal practice in the morning. Uh, you know, it's like a cleanup. Um, so uh, I really highly recommend doing something physical. Five minutes stretching, five minutes movement, opening up the body, and then five minutes of breath work. You know, that, that's about it. It's really um, what I found is really important to have this uh, this sadhana every day, so you kind of repeat. You know, you go back to the uh, root every morning, and you root yourself, and you clear the subconscious mind. So um, it's like a clean up for the body and for the mind, and this should be really automatic for for people like brushing teeth. Really, it's like a getting yourself ready for for whatever the day is there to offer. So um, yeah. Beautiful. it's it yeah this is what i found is really important these days and that that's beautiful when you're going into that state where you're able to accept that through the days you're going to do that inner work and have that's part of your process i always recommend having one day off my personal journey i do six days a week at least 20 to 20 minutes to an hour of uh, practice on those six days i have one day off where completely don't even think about anything spiritual like i'm not that spiritual guy on that day because that gives me inspiration for then when i'm on my path again and a lot of things for me was i did it seven days a week and i did it for years and years and then it burnt me the fuck out and i became such a, a an obsessed person with it so mm. do it if you're going to do the level like you, you we're doing here is six to six days a week seven days a week making sure you have a moment or a day where you just completely switch off. And once uh, you were talking, Pavel, about doing that process and the importance of you doing the morning work, once you've ingrained that and that's part of your everyday life, you've accepted it, there's no, there's no expectation or there's no shadow trying to stop you from doing it. You become such, you, you go into different worlds, you go into be able to connect to different frequencies of no time because that's what the galactics, that's what the universal beings all want us to do is understand daily practice, understand daily work, daily discipline. And once we reach those states of doing this and that's ingrained into the humanity, we go through the next process of our journey onto the road of the blue road of spirit where we can communicate more to our ancestors, our angels, so on and so forth. And for me, doing this work has helped me overcome depression. I've been depressed before, I've been addicted before 
and me doing this work fucking how it works <laughs> we, we'll put our hands up and we'll say it does work we, we're living breathing uh ex examples of the work does work and it in to experience it and if you're listening and you've got that side of you which is still held back into the 3d where you're just scared about everything just making that change today and saying no i'm not choosing to be lazy today i'm not choosing to not do my inner work i'm choosing to say no to that shadow part of myself and once you do the inner work you're like oh shit what what, what was i thinking this is why i do it i feel so good <laughs> so yeah thank you so much for sharing that pavel i really appreciate yeah. that and that brought a whole different perspective on it so thank you yeah it doesn't it doesn't really matter what you do you know what technique you do it's yeah. important that you do it beautiful thank you it doesn't really matter what you do it's it's yeah important that you do it <laughs> yeah and i look forward to coming to you the men's group in january yeah, nice. as well that'll be really cool so craig are you going to take us away on this winter are you going to give yeah, us a christmas so present how, how long are we doing 10 minutes or... yeah do 10 minutes yeah 10 minutes. Perfect, yeah okay. so um i'll just turn my sound off if you guys can mute yourselves please yeah no problem brother mm -hmm. So just starting off by getting yourselves comfortable, maybe taking a few deep breaths just to help start that relaxation process off. So breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just taking a moment to arrive to a place of stillness. Allowing the body to relax. Noticing with each in breath, the body becoming lighter. And with each out breath, the body relaxing, letting go. And you may like to do a quick scan of the body, see if you're holding tension anywhere in the body. And if you need any last minute adjustments, just a wiggle. And then as the sound starts, just allow it to melt away any remaining tension as you start to unwind and relax.
the snow rushes hold. Maybe take one deep breath, maybe the, the biggest breath you'll take today, just really breathing in through the nose, filling up the, the belly and the chest. And then release. start to bring some movement back into the body, gently opening the eyes and bringing yourself back to the space. Thank you so much brother, that was beautiful and I'd like to thank everyone as well for watching the show and what a great oh. outro. Thank you so much, Craig. That was beautiful, brother. Thank you. It's really difficult to keep it to 10 minutes. Wow. <laughs> we should get going. It's like you we're, don't want to stop. We went into no time there. <laughs> so, yeah. F f so, how can we both get a hold of you if you just want to share how we can, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, how we can do that? We'll start with Pavel. How can people get a hold of you, brother? Um, I've got a website, uh, www.joyfullion.com. So everything's on there. Um, there is a link to massage as well, if, if anybody was interested. Um, I've got two websites, but through the Joyful Lion, you'll, you'll find yoga courses, classes, and there is a link to therapy as well. Yeah. So... Beautiful. Thank you so much, brother. It's great to be able to share friendship with you, and I appreciate it. Thank you. And you, do. Thank you. And Craig, how can people get a hold of you? Um, yeah, same again, really. Uh, website or social media, Facebook, Instagram. But um, the soundtherapycompany.co.uk is the website, and that's uh, the brand I use for a lot of the. Well, the sound therapy obviously does what it says on the tin <laughs> and the mm. training courses and workshops and that side of thing and um, from the life coaching days there is a, a sort of a legacy website which is um, soulshine.life um, and i've still got quite a big following on those so i've got sort of two brands that, that run alongside each other at the moment but yeah social media is probably the best place beautiful beautiful and thank you so much for coming on both of you and for everyone watching if you like what you hear as well please subscribe comment i really appreciate everyone's feedback and i all hope everyone has a great christmas has time to relax has time to reflect and enjoy being a human being enjoying being here grounded into the skin suit so thank you both and have a great christmas and thank you all for watching Thanks, Dale. Thank you so much, brother. I'm off to collect my kids from school now. They're doing a half day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care, both of you. Thank you for coming on. All right. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.